My showy flowers are dominantly white, lavender, and brown, from one and a half to three inches in length, and are held on one or more flower head, which can be up to ten inches long. I am the small genius Aspasia flower. The 2018 FIFA World Cup is the 21st international football tournament that is currently ongoing in Russia. In support of the game, I decided to dress for the occasion. We wouldn't be featuring anything on the games, but you can look forward to learning about wigs and weave, Festa Junina, Doe Catcher, and Melanie Fallini. I am Lorene Ward. Welcome to Homestretch Magazine. Ghana has a few festive occasions that attract tourists. Another country that has large festive occasions is Brazil. When the country Brazil is mentioned in a conversation, it's sometimes about football, especially since we're in the height of football season. If you're not a football fan, Brazil has a variety of other attractions. Do you like partying and having a grand time with your friends and family? Well, there are a few festive occasions that brings together people in Brazil, such as Carnival and Festa Junina. Festa Junina, when translated to English, means June Festival. The Catholic tradition was introduced to Brazil during colonization by Portugal from 1500 to 1822. The events are based on European midsummer festives which celebrate the harvest and the saints, mainly Saint Anthony, Saint John the Baptist and Saint Peter. Despite its religious origin, the emphasis of Festa Junina is on creating a large social gathering of drinking, dancing, and you guessed it, eating. This annual event is celebrated across Brazil. The major cities have the largest celebrations. Individual events can also be found in almost every neighborhood. They are held in venues such as schools, churches, houses, bars and event spaces. Festa Junina happens at the beginning of Brazil's winter and lasts throughout June. In the north and northwest of Brazil, the festival continues through July. <laughs> Many people dress up in costumes mimicking a country-themed western style, denim shorts for girls and checkered shirts for both men and women. Some girls even braid their hair and paint freckles on their cheeks. Even though costumes are fun and exciting to wear, other attractions are even more captivating. As June is the month when corn crops are harvested in Brazil, the majority of sweet and savory dishes are prepared. 
Some of the popular dishes are konjika, corn on the cob, and corn cakes. Apart from the dishes that are prepared, fireside grilling of chicken, beef, pork, and sausages are done at the venues. Different types of beer, wine, and the famous Brazilian cocktail caipirinha is usually on sale. The food and drinks at Festo Janina is surely mouth-watering. However, the highlight of this grand festival is the Quadrela Folk Dance. The dance can have up to 30 colorfully dressed performers with a chosen bride and groom that act as the center of the spectacle. They all dance and sing to a genre of music called Fonhon. The inspiration of the dance is taken from the 17th century French quadrilles, a type of traditional square dance. Carnival, Festa Janina is the largest celebration in Brazil. This festive season attracts thousands of visitors from across the world who go to enjoy the merriment along with food and drinks. <laughs> enjoyed learning about a new culture and you're encouraged to visit Brazil and be a part of its many festivities. Food has always been an inspiration for new and exciting things. For instance, this do catcher. Today we have a familiar face with us once again. Renuka Tiwari. And guess what? She's going to be making another dream catcher for us. Alright, so today we'll be making a dough catcher, which is just a foodie version of a dream catcher, and it's inspired by a donut. So, for this project, here are some of the things we will be using. Paint, craft foam, clippers, paper paste, thread, a marker or pencil, scissors, three containers of different sizes. Why do we need this? So this one here will be to make the hoop which would stabilize everything. And then this one here would be to cut out the donuts. And you want it to be bigger than the hoop so that when you actually paste it together, it's gonna cover the wire. Then you'll need a smaller one for the hole in the middle. And some feathers, beads, and what's a donut without some sprinkles? So first we're gonna do the cutout for the donut. We'll be using the bigger container. So we need two, so just position it so that you'd get two and just do a simple outline and then another After this step, Renuka uses a smaller cup to cut out the middle and to paint them, I'm using Sargent watercolor but you can use any type of paint I chose this yellow ochre because it looks like caramel or you could take a darker brown to look like chocolate but today we'll be working with this. So after you would have painted this, you leave it to dry overnight because of the type of paint. And in the morning, you're going to end up with something looking like this. To make the hoop, she wrapped the wire around a Milo tin to get the desired circumference and secure the end with paper tape. This dough catcher will be suspended with a keyring. To attach the keyring, Renuka uses a piece of thread. So now that because we're going to be doing a donut, you're not going to want to tie string around your donut. So it's best to just put the string on before you actually paste it together. So these strings would be for the feathers. After that's finished, it's time to put the feathers on. Each feather will have a bead at the top and a row of multicolored beads will be in the middle. Alright, so now that we've attached the feathers and the beads, it's time to just attach the donut. But before that, what we could do is put on the little B. 
beads or diamantes. So we're mimicking rainbow sprinkles. So it'd be nice to just put different colors. And these come with glue at the back, so it's really easy to put on. After the donut has been nicely decorated, it's time to put everything together. And this is done with glue. All right, so this is the finished piece, the dough patcher. So to find us, you can find us on Facebook. We are Craft Creations and Smiles. We're also on Instagram, Craft Creations and Smiles. Or you can contact us on WhatsApp on 6140130. Inspiration can come from anywhere. All that matter is your point of view. Being talented is like having wings. You can go to greater heights and achieve anything. In our next feature, we will meet two talented young men who are now discovering how to put their creative gifts to use. Sometimes the best things come in pairs. It's double the fun, double the genius, and in this case, double the talent. Meet two young men who met each other in high school and moved from being just friends to starting a singing career together. This dynamic duo is Melody Felony. I'm in outer high school. Uh, when we came out of high school in 2015 is when, when we really started pursuing music. On, on, on a serious level and, and started writing music together. But this year is when we actually recorded, started recording music, so. Where did Melody Felony come from? Melody Felony was, was a group decision. It was, uh, it was made by all of us. We, was, we, was, we were basically looking for something that was catchy and something that would stick. And we went with Melody Felony because of the melodies that we bring on the music. and. It, it should be a crime to song that good, so that's why we went with Melody Felony. They have grown to achieve what they describe as an unbreakable bond and a very strong connection with each other. And as, him and I always got this connection. He, we don't even need to be around one another to, to write a song together, you know? So, and it's been like that for a very long time, so it's there. Two young men with two different forms of motivation. My motivation behind it is just basically because I really love it. So, in terms of the music, I'm putting you know all my energy towards it. Individuality plays a major role in defining motivation. Uh, and with that being said, I I think um, I think that every day that we're here, every 24 hour that we're here, every new day, should be enough motivation by itself. And of course, as young and upcoming artists, they look up to more experienced persons in the music industry for guidance. I used to listen to a lot of um, Biggie Smalls and Tupac and stuff like that. And it's just basically because of those guys, I, you know, started writing my own music and whatever. Listening to their work helped me to evolve into my own style. It doesn't matter the, the genre from, from reggae music to, from Bob Marley to, to Indian music. If you have been listening to the music in the background and wondering what it's all about, here is where you will learn more about it. First song, Shade, I think that's a song actually is out right now, like Sammy mentioned, that's getting tremendous support. Um, Javante found the rhythm, we vibed in it, Sammy built up the hook. We vibed and whatever, and he made his verse, I wrote my verse, and it's history. We got another tune out, Hero. Um, that's actually a, a, a tribute that we did to mothers around the world. And we Probably one of my favorite songs that we dropped thus far, uh, just simply because of the, 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 the message behind it. Melody Felony also has big plans in store for the near future. We're actually working on the video for Shake That Thing. It's been getting tremendous support ever since it, it debuted back in February. And uh, it, it's encouraged us to actually pursue for the, for the video, for the visuals. Mixtape and plans. I can't specify when the mixtape gonna be coming, but it's, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be steamy. 
Ante Duo is hoping that the local population keep their eyes and ears out for their new pieces since they believe they are different from other artists and have high hopes for their career. What we got coming forward, I think that we're very talented, so we could probably be beyond the average artist. Both youths are extremely thankful for the support they received from their inner circle, which is responsible for getting their career started, and to everyone else who helped them in even the smallest way. The music has always been a, a production of of collective teamwork, basically. It's good to have uh, producers like uh, Cody and Small Mom because they don't let you go astray. If if they see you miss a key, they would, you know, say you could do that better. The guy in charge of of our cover arts for our, for the songs and whatever. He's also another person that helps to get it to different DJs and whatever. He has his own um, media company, so he publishes everything and so on for us on the different sites and whatever. They pursue a successful singing career. They vow to stay humble and to spread love and positive vibes. They also have a message for other individuals who may be interested in pursuing a musical journey as they have. Just stay grounded as possible. Just stay real as possible. Don't don't follow the crowd. Don't do don't do it because somebody else doing it. Do it because you love it. Don't even look at money. Do it because you love it. And once you love it, there's no telling where you could go. Like they said, keep your eyes and ears out for what these two talented young men have in store. Whenever you see a well-dressed young lady, have you ever wondered what goes into the preparation of her look? Let's join a Nadia Holodar. Whether it's work or entertainment, everyone wants to look their best. From sharp suits and outfits to makeup and barbershop visits every weekend. For the ladies, they always have to do more. As the list of common trends increases, we're seeing more women pay attention to their hairstyle and regularly or occasionally use enhancements. That's right, we're talking about weaves and wigs. Point to note, there is a difference between the two. I think it comes down to the actual insulation. And so a wig is how it is installed. It's pretty much the version of the weave that is movable. And then of course the weave is comes down to the insulation as well, how that is installed and the version that is now becomes irremovable. And so um, the difference to the two is just pretty similar. Um, oftentimes you can't really tell the difference if someone has a weave or they have a wig on. Now that we have that cleared up, let's examine the types of hair that can be used when making a weave or a wig. There are mainly five types. Peruvian, Malaysian, Indian, Brazilian and the Eurasian hair. Bear in mind these aren't hair from the respective countries they've been named after. They're named so for the texture and wave pattern or style of the hair. Of the five main types of hair, four are synthetic. But the only real hair they have is the Indian hair. They call natural hair. That's because of what it allows you to do with it. It's sort of like a person's own natural hair. They can now strip it, they can remove color, they can add color, make, make a deposit. Despite this, you can make units, weaves or wigs from any type of hair you desire. Some hairstyles are extravagant and obvious, while others are more natural looking. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to weave on top of the cornrow that is established here earlier, but the, the, the track before determines how much and the spacing sizes in between. All of the weave will come with, a, with an area that allows you to see where you can actually make your spacing. But if you look through the weave here, you'll notice the darker area here. And then from here, it starts to get a little thinner as it comes out to the end, regardless of what curl pattern it is but your space inside shouldn't really go past this area. But I'm doubling here because this version of the weave is kind of thinner than the usual, right? So I want to ensure that I secure both the extension 
and the thread. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to come through to make a loop. But it's important to make a loop because we don't want the extension to run off of the hem. All right, so we're making the loop. So I'm going to go in. You notice the thread is here and then the weave is here. So I have to pass through both of them and I'm going to come in and as I pull, then I'm going to tighten back again. So I want to ensure, turn it for me. I want to ensure that I come down now to this row here and then I'm going to go back up this way before I can turn and come back the other way. Why? Because as you move the head and you move around here, you'll notice there's no space in between here and that's what we want to be able to secure. So in the vendor, the client wants to say, listen, I want to pull it in one so you don't see any gaps in between there. So one of the first things we do here in this bond, we, we secure the, the hem of the extension, the piece or the installation, the unit. We secure the end so that this is not separated from the pin itself. So you notice you got a little bond here. This doesn't matter how this is here because all of this will be wrapped and covered eventually. So it doesn't matter with that. All of this will also be covered as well. It doesn't matter how this is really pinned and tied. Once it's the first row, we got that one secured on the bottom, then it's okay. So we're going to pin this in to ensure that it doesn't come off, right? So now we are able to move this around the head. So we're going to wrap and after a couple of tears, after a couple of tears, we're going to pin again. So we're going to pass the whole thing around the client. All right. And then we'll continue to pull tight enough, right? And then after one row, it's time for us to pin again. We make a 360. So we're going to keep pinning. coming up and eventually the whole thing is going to be covered and then when we're done we're going to take this and we're going to style this in and that way you're not going to see the bond see that so the whole thing is going to be covered like that one thing is for sure weaves and wigs aren't just for one texture of hair or one race of people but oftentimes you'll hear that okay there's extensions or wigs or weaves are for maybe black and then there's everything else but um, it's just really not true um, the, the, the weave and the installation are done mostly to enhance what you have but the, the, the myth come in there I believe because of course we don't really understand where those pieces or units are, are being made and the Malaysian and the Brazilian the Indian version of it it, it doesn't really make a difference so I think sometimes people get confused and they don't understand for example the Eurasian version um, which is the European version of the hair and that one it's, it's really the white girl here and most people don't really know that you see a, a, a fabulous television anchor or somebody within the public fraternity and you say wow nice hair you don't know that the hair was actually enhanced. Depending on the occasion you have to attend you may add a unit or several units whatever your decision is wear it proudly. your own version of beauty with grace and poise. Let this be so regardless of your hair type, texture or color. This is where we bring the curtains down. Remember to like our Home Church Magazine Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I am Lorene Ward reminding you to get in the game and support your favorite team.